Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks once again, and in today's video we're going to be looking at using the append node inside the UMG widgets. Uh, this is good for things like uh, text and numbers that you want to uh, display onto the screen. But um, let's say for instance we have these items here for score, and on the screen you want to be able to display how much score you have. Now just doing a direct cast to a text thing inside of your widget, uh, you're just going to get the number. But what if you wanted to have it as uh, score equals and then that number? Well the append node will help us with that uh, as well as many other uh, examples that I'll show you. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. So first things first, we're just going to want to create a widget so we can have that displayed on our screen. Come down here, right click, user interface, widget blueprint, let's just call that uh, player HUD. Here we go. Double click on that to open. Uh, let's go grab some text. And uh, I want to have it at the top in the middle, so let's anchor that to the top. I'm just going to make the text a little bit bigger. So you come under font, and let's make this uh, 50 or something. And you can size the content to make sure that the bounds cover up all the text. Uh, let's check this as a variable and name it score variable text let's compile and save now in our character blueprint we're going to want to be able to um, uh, on on game start have it so that that widget that we've just created is actually applied to our camera so let's go edit third person and let's find event begin play. In fact, there actually is no event begin play in here, so let's go and grab one. Right click and type in event begin play. I'm going to drag off of that, create a widget. Class is our player HUD. And then off of return value, we want to go add to viewport. Add to player screen is good if you're dealing with like multiple split screens or for like local play stuff, but we don't have to do with that right now, so we can just do add to viewport. Cool. Let's compile and save. So now that we're back in the game, you can see that with just a simple code, we now have our text block at the top of the screen, uh, but we want to be able to have it display our score. As we run through these little score cubes that I've just created off screen. To do that, let's go back into our player HUD and we can create a binding to what the text says. Just right here, create binding. Now, in our player character, I made a variable before called score and this will be storing the amount of score that we have. In these little point actors that I have here, I have it so that if you overlap the cube mesh, it will increment the amount that the score variable has. Also plays a little bit of a sound effect, and then it destroys the actor once we have gotten the score. Back into the player HUD with our get score variable text. I'm going to drag off here, cast to third person character, or or any character, uh, depending on if you're working on a personal project or if you are uh, using a different template. We want to get play a character. Now the player character uh, index that 
is going to be uh, different numbers if you're doing uh, local play. So let's say you have it set to split screen and you have two local players. Zero is going to be player one, one is going to be player two, two is going to be player three, etc, etc. Now here we want to get score and we can drag it into there. Now this is basically just a translation of an integer to the text. Uh, we don't really have to worry about too much in there. Let's go and compile and save. Save all. I like clicking that save all there every now and then just to make sure. So now that we are in here, you can see at the top we have a zero. It's a little off-center, but it still works for our example. Now as we run through, It now goes up to 20 and it increases every time we pick up a point cube. But what if we want to have it say score and then display the actual score beside that? Well, we can't edit anything in here because we now have the binding set to that. So how are we going to get the text to score before this? Well, that's where append comes in. Now append is under the string uh, node. See it uh, uh, two strings together to make a new string. Yeah so what we're going to do let's get rid of this and connect our score to B. Now in A we can type in score and make sure you add a space so that the last uh, uh, character field in there is a space. Now we can connect these two. Let's go and compile and save. And now you see it at the top of the screen, it says score and displays the correct number. So what if we wanted to do a uh, append, uh, but rather than just having something at the start um, and then the number, we want um, some sort of combo of like some some text that we have stay the same all the time. In this case, that would be score. Um, and then you have your score number, which is tied to a variable. And then after that, we have something. So something that I can think of is what if you have a, a health bar and you want to have the health displayed as health in text and then the variable which is constantly changing because you might get damaged or you might get some 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 health uh, but then you want after the the health variable number uh, you want a percent sign so that's what we're going to do in here now all you have to do for that is just add an extra pin here and then in C you can type in the percent sign and it doesn't really work in this case because we're still just using the score thing but if we go back you see now that we have a percent sign at the end of our text widget and you can keep on adding pins and do it with as with as many different combos as you want. Um, you know, there isn't really a limit to this, just basically how much space on the screen you have to fit all of this. Another use for something like a pen that I can think of is, um, uh, let's say you have a card game of sorts that uses just you know, like the basic standard classic cards, you know, like diamonds, hearts, uh, spades, you know, and it goes from like uh, one to nine or, you know, and uh, we wanted to have on screen display something like um, in, in text, uh, tell you like the card that you've just picked up from a deck. So you could have something like, um, let's put, uh, space, O F space, cool. Um, and then in A, you could have something like uh, seven, three, five, and then C would be 
um, of 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 spades, of diamonds, of hearts, you know, and the uh, info that would be connected into here would be the variables tied to, like, the card that's just been picked up. Another neat little thing that I've learned to do is using the format text node uh, to do some pretty cool things with it. Uh, for instance, in uh, in one of my own projects, uh, I'm using this to uh, display time uh, inside the menu for like how long you've actually been playing the game. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to uh, get the same as this, but I'm going to put it to the bottom of the screen. Let's just make sure they're lined up. Cool. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to get a binding here. And let's get format text. Now, just for this example, I'm not going to actually use any uh, any variables because it'll take a while for me to uh, create the code for um, for counting how long you've actually been playing the game. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is uh, let's have H. M and S. So once I do that, we now have these select so like these open to us to use. Now you could plug in the variables into here. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make some literal text just to quickly show you this example in effect. Uh, let's say that hour is, um, uh, what's the time while recording this? It is uh, 8 hours, I'm going to do zero 08, 42 minutes and 38 seconds. Plug that result into there. If I compile and save. Now you see at the bottom of the screen how that has been formatted for us. Uh, you can just imagine that um, that if we have that binding that we've just made connected to variables that are changing on the fly, then you could easily make a, a digital watch widget. Like maybe you're in first person and you want to have the character pull up his arm so you can check the the time uh, that's that's in the in, that's like in the world that you're running around in, you know and you can use this you know obviously with the variables connected um to show that time you know um you you could even have some like some like 24 hour clock system and use that in combination with the uh, previous day night cycle tutorial that i've made um if you haven't seen that i'll have it as a uh as a end screen thing that you can click on at the end of the video well, that's pretty much summed it up for this tutorial. If you want to know uh, more uh, with this sort of stuff, then let me know down in the comments below if you'd like me to work more on uh, like widget tricks like this. Um, if you want to have any tutorials on anything else, like maybe you want me to uh, teach you how to create the base for a first person shooter, or a strategy game or maybe something very specific in like some post-processing setting that's bugging you you know just you know just just ask for it in the comments i'll i'll take a look and i'll get back to you as soon as i can on when i can make this on when i can make those tutorials uh but yeah thank you for watching again uh subscribe if you haven't yet and i'll be here for the next tutorial i've been andrew for aurora gameworks and thank you for watching Take care, guys. It's a 15-story.